He's been called Dr. Satan, the werewolf of Paris, and the demonic ogre. Yet the bizarre case of Marcel André Henry Felix Pitot, a man beheaded for the murders of 26 people and suspected of claiming dozens more, remains shrouded in mystery. Born January 17th, 1897, was a French doctor and serial killer. He was convicted of multiple murders after the discovery of the remains of 23 people in his house in Paris during World War II. He is suspected of the murder of around 60 victims during his lifetime, although the true number remains unknown. After the 1940 German defeat of France, French citizens were drafted for forced labor in Germany. Pitot provided false medical disability certificates to people who were drafted. He also treated the illness of workers who had returned. In July 1942, he was convicted of overprescribing narcotics, even though two addicts who would have testified against him had disappeared. He was fined 2,400 francs. Pitot later claimed that during the period of German occupation, he was engaged in resistance activities. Allegedly, he developed secret weapons that killed the Germans without leaving forensic evidence, planted booby traps all over Paris, had high-level meetings with Allied commanders, and worked with a non-existent group of Spanish anti-fascists. There was no evidence to support any of these statements. Pitot's most lucrative activity during the occupation was his false escape route. Under the codename Dr. Eguin, Pitot pretended to have a means of getting people wanted by the Germans or the Vichy government to safety outside of France. Pitot claimed that he could arrange a passage to Argentina or elsewhere in South America through Portugal for a price of 25,000 francs per person. Once victims were in his control, Pitot told them that Argentina officials required all entrance to the country to be inoculated against all disease and with this excuse injected them with cyanide. He then took all their valuables and disposed of their bodies. At first, Pitot dumped the bodies, but he later destroyed the bodies by submerging them in quicklime or by incinerating them. In 1941, Pitot bought a house, but failed to keep a low profile. The Gestapo eventually found out about him, and by April 1943, they had heard all about this route for the escape of wanted persons, which they assumed was part of the resistance. On March 11, 1944, Pitot's neighbors complained to police of a foul stench in the area and of large amounts of smoke bellowing from the chimney of his house. Fearing a chimney fire, the police summoned firemen who entered the house and found a roaring fire in a coal stove in the basement. In the fire and scattered in the basement were human remains. Ultimately, Marcel Pitot was found guilty of 26 counts of murder for profit. It was estimated that he netted 200 million francs from his ill-gotten gains. Many suspect he actually claimed upwards of 60 victims. On May 25, 1946, he was beheaded by guillotine. Remember, if you find it seriously strange, hit the like button and subscribe for more. On a side note, I would like to apologize for the delay in videos as of recent, um, for the last couple of months at least. Uh, as some of you know, my father had just recently passed away from terminal cancer, and I only had a very short time to be with him. Uh, so there's been some big changes in my- in my <laughs> sorry, a little nervous. There's been some big changes in my life, and, um, he was a big part of my life, uh, we did everything together, and he was actually uh, pretty well one of my main supporters for doing my videos and was very proud of me, even though he didn't like the dark content. <laughs> he was still there and proud for me. <laughs> um, so to the people who knew about it, thank you for all your pleasant comments and um, well wishes. It means a lot to me. I have been reading them. And um, I've just been busy dealing with the process of that and then the aftermath of that and um, I'm also in the middle of uh, packing and moving right now <laughs> from a house that my family has rented for 35 years I know 
Um, so I have a lot of stuff because my dad and my sister, they kind of like to, you know, hold on to things. <laughs> There's a lot of packing and throwing out going on. So I'm doing that pretty well after I finish work, after eight hours, I'm doing that till about eight or ten o'clock at night. And um, on the odd occasion, I actually do get a couple hours to rest and been going camping with some really good family members of mine. So that's been lovely. Um, so I'm just getting ready to move and I've found a place uh, further up in BC. It's about six to eight hour drive away um, that I have to get ready to, to move to and uh, pack up all my animals and um, spending a lot of money get, getting them all set up for that because it's a big trip on them and some of them are pretty old. Um, well, actually a lot of them are pretty old. I only have one spunky young bird. I have three birds and one cat <laughs> and everybody else is old. <laughs> and I got one really ancient cockatiel who's like just such a senior citizen. So that's going on. Um, I'm moving because I can't find where I currently live a place that's affordable and that will allow the three birds. They're okay with the cat, but they're not okay with the birds. Even though the birds are super quiet, they're asleep right now. They're very quiet. Um, and I'm very quiet. <laughs> so that's what's been going on with me. Um, so sorry again for the delay. Sorry for my rambling. Um, Sorry if I worried any of you. I'm okay. I really am. It's just been a process and, you know, I'm a little tender. Um, so yeah. Uh, life's okay though. I'm pretty excited about the move. It seems like a really great opportunity and um, it seems like a wonderful place for my pets. I just have to make sure that the people I'm moving in with, that their dog doesn't try and eat my cat. <laughs> or that my cat doesn't try and attack the dog that will eat my cat. <laughs> Big change. Moving somewhere where there's predators and not just domestic dogs. There's like actual legit predators. I'm in a rural area where we have no predators. So this is a big honking change. Um, so yeah. I just rambled again. I'm sorry, you guys. I will let you go. Have a wonderful evening or day, whatever time you're watching this. And um, just know that there will be videos coming your way very, very soon when I have the time. All right. Bye-bye.